So I got to admit, this is like my third attempt at making this video. So I'm hoping third time's a charm and we're going to see how it goes. Uh, so what we're going to talk about are gradient vectors and directional derivatives. And I'm going to try to make this short because it's a video and we can't, you know, talk about it like we would in class. So the first thing I'm going to go with is what is a gradient vector? Well, as the name implies, a gradient vector is a vector. And that's important to know. Um, and the gradient vector is made up of components. are partial derivatives. All right, so components are partial derivatives um, of some other multivariable function. So it says let z equal f of x, y be a function of x and y such that f sub x and f sub y exists. Then the gradient of f denoted by this upside down triangle called the del, um, del f, is the vector del f of x, y equals f sub x of x, y, and f sub y of x, y. Long story short, you have f sub x first and f sub y second. Okay, or you can think of that as dz z to x first and dz z to y second. That's it. It's really just taking the two first partial derivatives and making them the components of a vector. And you can do this with more components. If you had a function of three variables, then you could have a gradient vector that would have three components. All right. So if I wanted to find the gradient of f of x, y for the function radical 2x minus y, and then evaluated it to 1, I'm just going to follow the rule at first. And we'll talk about what that rule gives us in a little bit. So if I wanted to find grad f of x, y, I need to take my partial derivatives. So the derivative of 2x minus y to the 1 half with respect to x is going to be bring down the power, reduce it by 1, multiply by the derivative of the inside with respect to x. And then the derivative with respect to y is going to be quite similar. And then times the derivative of the inside with respect to y gives me a gradient vector of, let's see, those would cancel. This is going to be 2x minus y to the negative 1 half, comma, negative 1 half, 2x minus y to the negative 1 half. Okay, so there's the gradient vector in terms of x and y, and what you'll notice now is that I have a vector, and this vector has variables in it. Those variables are x and y. No big deal. Then we're supposed to evaluate that at the point 2, 1. So now I'm going to plug 2 in for x and 1 in for y. So that's going to be 3 to the negative 1 half and negative 1 half, 3 to the negative 1 half, and that just looks ugly. So I'm going to write it as 1 over radical 3, comma, negative 1 over 2 radical 3. Or if I wanted to even do more than that, I could pull out this guy and do that. Any of those are fine. I don't care which one you pick. Okay, whatever that means, I did it. Yay! I know what it means. I'm just pretending I don't know what it means because you don't know yet. Okay, it's, it's the little game we play. All right, well, what if I had to do it again for another function that's got an ln in it? Yay! Um, at the point 1, 2 again. Uh, last time it was 2, 1. Now we have 1, 2. No big deal. So if I want the gradient, the gradient of f with respect to x and y, is going to be first the derivative with respect to x. This is going to be y times 1 over x plus y squared. There's the derivative with respect to x. And now the derivative with respect to y is going to be ln x plus 2xy. Okay. I'm supposed to evaluate that at the point 1, 2. So the gradient at the point 1, 2 is going to be, let's see, 2 times 1 plus 4. And then ln1 plus 2 times 1 times 2. So the gradient of f at 1, 2 is going to be 6. ln of 1 is 0, 4. Cool. I mean, okay. 
what is that though? And to answer that question before I do it and just hand you the answer, we are gonna pull up some 3D graphs. So let me pull up GeoGebra here. And I am gonna graph that first function, radical 2x minus y. So z equals um, the square root of 2x minus y. And I get this thing. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. So what am I going to do with this? Well, so if I look at this here, what I have is this happy little graph. Now, we were supposed to evaluate that graph at the point, let's see, 2, 1, and find the gradient factor? Well, let's see what that does. So if I evaluate this at just regular 2, 1, that's going to be the square root of 3. So if I find the point 2, 1, radical 3, there's that point on the graph. And then if I'm supposed to take that point and the vector I get is the vector one negative a half times one over radical three. Basically, I'm going to the right and down. So let's see, if I orient this, okay, like that, I gotta move my face out of the way here. This red axis is X, the green axis is Y. If I orient that like that, and then I try, my face is just always in the way here, isn't it? Let's find a color that'll show up. That'll work. So if I start at that point A, and I go in the positive X direction, but the negative Y direction, I'm going like that. And if I think about what that would mean for the curve, I would be going up on the curve. Okay, fine. Now, what if I switch to that other function? The other function being y ln x, x y squared. Come on. So if I have y ln x plus x y squared, whoops. I get this cool looking thing. I like it. And this one, we were at the point one, two. So at the point one, two, this would be zero plus four would be four. So the point one, two, four. And let's see. Oh, one, two, four. There it is. So now if we look at that one, and I orient it again so I can see x and y. Get my face out of the way here. There's x and y. We were supposed to move in the positive x direction and the positive y direction. So that would mean I'm going this way. Let's see if I get my face out of the way again. My face is always in the way. So if I go positive x, positive y, that means I'm going kind of right and forward. That means I'm kind of doing this. And look, my point goes up again. Okay? Is that a coincidence? No. We went up both times, and it is not a coincidence. Because what the gradient actually gives you is your gradient actually gives you the direction of steepest ascent. Okay, so if you are at a certain point on a graph and you want to go up the fastest, the gradient will give you the direction of steepest ascent. Okay, then. So that's what I've got for gradient. Uh, I am going to stop this video so it is not too long, and there will be another video on directional derivative because that's what's coming up next.